I've ever seen anybody satisfied with what they're doing and it's the reason why rollerblading is progressing so fast and nobody sits there saying that's the way it should be we need that's that's how it should be and everybody's always trying to push a little bit further and a little bit further well with so many skaters from around the world they all bring different styles sort of different signatures the inverts become somewhat of a lost art on Burt, but look at how Mike Budnick stalls it out. He always does it with such confidence and such authority, and it's really become one of his signatures. Every skater excels in different areas. Mike Budnick really shines in the bowl, going around both corners. He skated the bowl contest in the past few seasons better than any of the other riders, and he really was in his element going around those corners. Well, Mike, he can at least teach me anything he wants. Yeah, talk about a trademark. Alley Oop Fish Brain, you know if Mike Budnick's going for it, he's going to hit it. Ty Chris, of course, the guy to do the first ever Gato spin. Sometimes inspiration comes from the strangest of places. I wanted to first to do a flat spin 720, and I could not make it, and the rotation changed and become a mix of a flat spin and a normal 720. And uh, then I saw that on video, and I thought, wow, that's great. That's a new trick, you know? And I could do it perfect, so perfect, you know? And that trick still has been unparalleled. Nobody else can do it. Eito Yasutoko took Cesar Mora's 1080 and put a twist on it. My favorite trick is uh, 1080 flat spin because it is uh, my original trick. And uh, yeah, I love watching him do his, uh, his uh, 1080. Uh, he's got a different axis than uh, the normal people and uh, what the norm does. And it looks really cool. I really like watching that. You heard Shane talking about that axis. Watch how he goes up and lays flat, almost parallel to the coping before spinning that 1080 and coming back in faking. It's always nice to get a compliment about spinning from this guy, the king of spins, Shane Yost, who does the only 1260 on fur. Yeah, and this is really incredible. There's only a few people in the world that throw the 1080. Shane Yost is the only person in the world that throws this forward to forward 1260. Shane, for some reason, I don't know what it is, can spin like a maniac. He does his 1260, I'll watch that every day for the rest of my life. My 1260 is definitely the most challenging in my trick re repertoire. Um, it's just one of those tricks that's just, uh, you know, it's, it's very gnarly. If you pop out or you pop it wrong, you, you can possibly die on it. And it's just, I don't know, very, very scary. In vert skating, and the Americans have virtually disappeared at the top level of competition until this year when Matt Lindemann surprised everybody, landing the first ever double back on vert. Matt Lindemuth landing this double backflip marked a turning point in burnt rollerblading. Everyone knew they had to go back to the drawing board after that one. When we come back, we head over to the street course, taking a look at some of the most recognized faces in skating and some of the tricks that they've helped trademark. ASA Pro Tour Best Tricks 2001 is brought to you by Yuhu, America's favorite chocolate drink, skates on or skates off. By Paul Mitchell, the style and lifestyle sports. By the North Hills Mall, discover the difference at the Mall of the Future. Welcome back to the ASA Pro Tour Best Tricks 2001 from the North Hills Mall in Dallas, Texas. We had a chance to sit down with Mike Budnick and superstar Aaron Feinberg and get their thoughts on the progression of street skating. As fast as rollerblading is progressing, it's amazing to see that in just not even a year, probably about six months, we went from, okay, can we do this, to forget it, we know we can do this, but it's a disaster to do this. And, and, it's amazing just how fast rollerblading is progressing. And now there's not just like a few skaters that stand out and are that good. I mean, every skater stands out in their own way and is that good. I mean, I think you're right though. It's gonna go in the direction of, you know, doing stuff that you wouldn't normally do in the past on stunts that, you know, you wouldn't even think of doing.
Well, clearly one of the most exciting skaters in the world on the tour and just on the streets is Jaron Grove. Nicknamed the monster, he's earned that name for his ferocious style of skating. Never afraid to drop into anything with big spins and throw his huge sideways 900. When this trick first came out, people really didn't know what to make of it. He looks so out of control, but he lands it every time, and it really has become one of his signature moves. Now, in contrast, on the other end of the spectrum is Aaron Feinberg, who pulls out controlled technical grinds. There's a Savannah, which has become one of his signature moves. But watch how he gets into it. Topside sole, and they'll do it fast slide through the kink right into the backside Savannah. And that's his signature move right there. But you could say it is signature is technicality. Sean Robertson has made an art form of doing toe tap tricks, which adds a huge level of difficulty to the middle of spins. And he's able to do them just about up and over anything. Last year's street champion Sven Bokers is talented on street and Burt. Here he brings the alley porn star to Burt. For me personal, it's not so hard trick to do it. It's like the spin is natural and the grind is also natural for me. So it's like one yeah, smooth grind for me to do it. And well, it's a credit to Sven that he makes every trick look so easy. Something you won't see up on the Burt Ramp anytime soon is street legend John Julio. He's shown off some tricks that he made popular, like the fish brain and the top side acid. John Julio and the rest of the crew are going to be stepping it up when we come back with the Corn Nuts Sick Trick Contest from Dallas. Welcome back to the ASA Best Tricks. Oh! Dallas, the World Championships. What better place than this to unleash some of the biggest tricks of the year? They wait all year long. It's the Corn Nuts Sick Trick Contest and the Vert Ramp. You could tell things were going to get crazy quick. Ty Chris started off right, getting upside down about 10 feet out. Sean Robertson uh, dropped in on the, the regular side of the Vert Ramp and rolled into the channel up the recessed part of the, the vert ramp and spin almost like a flat spin and land back in the transition. It was pretty crazy for, for someone to even attempt that. A lot of the guys were using the channel in in completely different ways, which which is to be expected. There are your guys like Shane Yost who are typical spinners. What uh, Matt Lindemuth chose to do over the channel was, it was pretty disgusting. I've thought and dreamed and fantasized of doing a double back over the channel for a long time now. Ever since I landed my first one, I want to do something to step up. And to throw a double back on a vert ramp is one of the most dangerous tricks out there right now. And he came close to landing it two times, I think, and it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen done on a little bit. It almost worked. I just paid the price today, and I'll try it again soon. Over on the street course, it was a a battle between technical skaters and go big style with huge airs. Jason Stinn's been going for the first 1260 on a street course. So close on that attempt, and then Louis Amor bringing some street styles. He goes topside soul through the first part of the kink, and then jumps to shuffle down the embankment. Carlos, it's crazy jump from the rail to the curb. You know normally transfer kink throws unless they're mellow or something and that was not only like a steep kink throw it was a eight foot gap or something to the ledge and it's just a crazy trick to try i mean you don't lock on in the second royale or something you're gonna go over the other side on the drop off your belly flop he went the royale down the kink and then jumped to the the planet which is like a meter and a half or something away it's pretty far and slid all the way down that so i knew it was going to win after that Carlos left an indelible mark on the street course numerous times this season. He's really good. He's got lots and lots of potential. He's going to get so much better. And indeed, Carlos Pianowski takes the sick trick championship on street. Sean Robertson beats out Tyg on fur. Hey, it's Shane Yost here. Uh, we're taking a break from skating. Uh, we're going into Gameworks to check out to see what they got to offer. And it's going to get crazy.
Shane kick my ass in every <laughs> At this year's showdown at the hoedown at Eisenberg Skate Park, the final five came down to Brian Shima, Mike Murta Johnson, Dustin Halloran, Robert Guerrero, and Frankie Morales. But before we got down to the final five, the Eisenberg's contest started out with a field of over 60 of the top pro and amateur skaters, street skaters from all over the country and all over the world. They all gathered in Plano, Texas on a brand new street course designed and built just in time for the hoedown to battle out for the $8,000 top spot. Here's how the format went. We start out with 60 riders, divide them into three heats of 20. Those heats were the elimination rounds. The 20 riders had jam sessions. At the end of their sessions, they voted on their own heat, advancing just the top 10. The top 10 from each elimination round advanced into a super session of 30 riders, and the 30 eliminated skaters became the judges. 30 went down to 15, and then 15 went down to the top five, who battled it out on the legend rail sessions. When all was said and done, the last man standing was Brian Shima, who earned $8,000 for the first place prize. And the best trick in $1,500 went to Robert Guerrero. When we come back, we're going to take a look at five of the most notable tricks on Burt and five of the most notable street tricks. Don't go anywhere. The last year for vert skating has been probably one of the, the most exciting years since the days of Chris Edwards' stardom. Vert skating is really coming into its own, it's really developing its own, developing its own identity right now. And not only are we doing our own thing, but we're getting more respect now because we're doing our own thing. And someone will watch Takeshi do his, his Viking flip flat spin thing and to see a skateboarder or a biker or, or just general public say, wow, what was that? It's a really cool time for vert skating right now. Now we're gonna take a look at five of the most definable tricks throughout the season. Benny Huber in Dallas at the North Hills Mall and the Sick Trick Contest brought to you by Corn Nuts. Getting a little creative. It's a lot harder than it looks. So yeah, first he's gotta get a good air so he has enough speed to come the wrong way up the rolling and jump to that soul stall and then shuffle back in. It takes a lot of skate control. Now throughout the year and here in Baltimore at the White Marsh Mall, Mark Engelhart pulled one of the most difficult tricks nobody else does. That's right, it's a signature move for sure. Flat spin, five point disaster stall in the coping to Reaver. Michael Bennett, you can always count on to do the big tricks, and he did it back in Dallas at the Sick Trick Contest in Corn Nuts. Well, he's almost become like a best trick skater. That's all he does now, but they are good tricks when he comes out. 545 to Ali Mizu. Very, very incredible trick. And then he spins it another 270 back in. Shane Yoss, well, you know it. In Dallas and throughout the season, getting upside down with the 1260. This used to be strictly a best trick move for Shane, but now he can land it in contest. Amazing. Tied Chris, taking Matt Lindemuth's double backflip and grabbing it. Well, both Tyg and Matt came out with grabs on that double backflip for the world championship. Ty's got the mute variation on it, and it looks pretty. Keeping the crowd happy, we now transition over to the street course. And you who presents the top five most definable tricks of the season, Vinny Minton making his mark in Milwaukee. Going outside the street course, getting up close and personal with the fans. Jumping onto the rails, backside royale, backside royale, backside royale. Creative use of the course. Why not a 540 back in? Getting up and close with the Summerfest folks. Aaron Feinberg in Huntington Beach, California, doing his classic fast slide, but he disastered into it. Well, you call it classic now, but 
when he did it here, balancing on one foot as we look at the freeze frame, and even through the kink, that's what makes the trick so difficult, getting that balance just right. And as you mentioned, made all the more difficult by the fact that he launched into it. Now, Carlos Pianowski's been making his mark all season long. He finished it off, capping it. The corn nut sick trick with the huge Royale to Royale transfer. Right, very difficult trick going frontside Royale through the king and then jumping about six to eight feet to the Royale and landing it clean. Darren Grove at the World Team Challenge, Ontario, California. First fakie 1080 over the big launch. It was the first time these riders had seen that giant launch box and Jaron Grove taking advantage of the opportunity to throw some big tricks. Huge stunts for him. And Jaron did conquer the loop, but this was the guy who did it first. When everyone first saw this thing built out at the contour course, most people thought it was impossible. Then Randy Marino decided to go for it, and on his second try, he stuck it. It wasn't the prettiest thing you've ever seen. But it paved the way for all the riders who came after him and showed just what rollerbladers are capable of. If you build it, they will come. Randy Marino, the first one through the loop. The crowd at Mervyn's California Beach Bash saw a bit of rollerblading history. Sometimes progression is paved with pain. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some of the biggest obstacles standing in their way. This is brought to you by Corn Nuts, now available in seven mean flavors. Corn Gone Wrong. By Levi's, make them your own. By Touchstone Pictures, Out Cold, coming to theaters November 21st. Watching the double backflips throughout the year, and it's another sign that as rollerbladers, we're not going to just stop and say, yeah, we got that trick, now that's done. The double back has been a work in progress for years now, you know, and people really didn't know that. When I was trying it, people were still saying that it was never going to happen on vert. And I think I probably gave it like 10 tries or whatever, and I was starting to really get disappointed, thought I was going to have to call it quits. I took a pretty bad fall again there. And if it wasn't for the crowd chanting one more time and really getting me psyched up on it and amped to do it again, I don't think I would have gotten back up there, but I'm glad they did. I saw Lindy doing his double back and it was really crazy. Like, I never thought somebody could do a so dangerous trick. I mean, you know, to go two times head down, it's really dangerous. But that gave me, like, the, the, the power to try. You know, I really wanted to do this trick then. And uh, I practiced a little bit before X game, but I never, like, really could do it safe. And I did, I did like, three, four tries before X game. And then I got there, and because of the crowd, 22,000 people looking at me, like the TV, everybody, I said to myself, I have to do it, you know, I really have to do it. And it was amazing for me because I landed in my room, first time ever, front of everybody, and I won. It was like really a dream from a kid, you know, becoming true. Learning a trick like this where no one else has tried it, no one else has done it, and it really gives vert skating and rollerblading throughout the sports, the limelight for a little bit, it just makes me feel, it makes me feel like I've done something good for the sport. <laughs> the loop is just huge and scary, and I don't know, I might try it if I get pumped up enough. A loop? Oh, hell no. I'm scared of that thing. It's pretty crazy, but I don't, I'm not trying to kill myself on a loop today. What sucks is we all made the agreement the day before, we were all going to do it. We wake up the next morning, and me and Ryan already look at each other like, we're not going to do it. <laughs> Randy's, Randy's up there beating himself in the chest, swearing he's going to do it. Next thing you know, he's the second one to drop in, does it, lands it his second try. Had the whole crowd hyped, had the Hermosa Beach bouncing up his feet. Everybody wanted to see somebody do it. and I figured Jaron would try it. He's, he's a pretty nutty guy, and he's a real good skater. I, I love, I enjoy watching him skate a bunch, and uh, I, I figured he would try it. That didn't surprise me at all. And as is the case in rollerblading, one trick accomplished is not the end of the story. It just paves the way for all the skaters to come after them to try something new and creative, like Sean Robertson taking a new way through the loop. There were many sick tricks throughout the year, but this year's corn nut sick trick went to a guy who combined technicality with stunts, Carlos Pianowski. This trick had it all. Creativity as he uses the wall. Technicality going true spin soyal and danger as he goes over that 12-foot gap. 
That's this year's 2001 Sick Trick brought to you by Corn Nuts. Special thanks to the Residence Inn Fossil Creek, the official hotel of the ASA World Championships and Mobile Skate Park Series. Also, special thanks to Rocky Talkie, the official two-way radio provider of the ASA. To KDGE, The Edge 102.1, the official radio station of the World Championships and the North Hills Mall. Discover the difference at the Mall of the Future. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. I'm